Hello to you all. That's yeah, so a good evening, uh, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you're tuning in from. Welcome along to another live Instagram video. We will in a second. Um, so yeah, as we go, please feel free to give your country a shout out. Tell us uh, what you're driving. Um, throw up any questions and we will um, hopefully be able to uh, post those to our guests in a second as well. Um, if you've not tuned in before, um, please also check out our previous interviews on IGTV. Uh, you can also find them on Facebook and uh, YouTube as well. Uh, Paul, if you're watching this, can you log in as you? Because um, you need to upgrade your Instagram app. <laughs> We're off to a great start. We will be with you in a moment. Just a small technical hitch. Someone from the USA, so I hi there to, from the, uh, the USA. Uh, Carbon Corrado, I'm glad we've been able to help you with that. Now I've got to test, being tested on what flags are. Ah, should have studied geography. Oh, we've got a 914 Outlaw, a 997 C2S. I love a 914. Oh, J famous James. Thank you, Famous James. He'll hate me calling him famous. Uh, we will be getting underway shortly. Uh, just a small uh, technical hitch updating um, Instagram. Which, uh, yeah, these things happen. At least we've got internet today. Uh, someone from the Philippines, uh, Canada. Uh, Razor Edge from Sussex. Oh, Jason. Welcome along, Jason. Thank you for joining us. We might just bear me a second. Fingers crossed, this might work. Thankfully. Aha! There's someone there. We can see, oh, I can hear you, Paul. Yeah, good. Oh. Um, <laughs> hang on, we just, I've had to That's swap right. phones. I'm just going to put, um, do not disturb on this phone. Just give us 30 seconds. Yeah, no worries. So, um, yeah, uh, with some few formalities. My name's Andy, worked at Heritage Park Centre for 13 years. My job involves meeting people, sharing stories about them as enthusiasts and businesses. As you may be able to see there just in the background, today's guest is best known for building jaw-dropping air-cooled Volkswagens. His initial love was for Type 3s, but that expanded into Type 2s. And if it's got the right badge on the back and an engine there, he'll turn it into something pretty special. So, uh, yeah, Paul Meadows, there we go. Good afternoon, finally. Hey! It, it was all that. going too swimmingly, wasn't it, on the, on the check? How are we doing? Yeah, we're good, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you very much. Sorry about the stress. <laughs> it seems, seems I have a vintage edition of Instagram on my phone. So, um, ah. yeah, we have to frantically find a more modern 21st century phone. So, yeah, we're good. Cool, cool. Well, um, yeah, let's, um, let's talk about the beginning, I suppose. Um, were you always going to end up working with cars? And uh, what did you want to be when you were a kid? When I was a kid, I used to make little um, Lego garages. And I'd okay. Forgotten, I'd forgotten I'd, um, I used to make them. 
And um, and then when I had this place, I realised it was actually the Lego toy that I made when I was a kid. So I must have sort of cosmically ordered that, I reckon. Fair enough. Yeah, bit, bit freaky. <laughs> bit freaky. But yeah, no, um, yeah, it was, yeah, I always liked cars. Um, yeah, Volkswagen's got into an early age, but I'm sure we'll come on to that in a little while. But yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, it's in my blood, I think, unfortunately. So, someone said that you look like Fuzz Townsend with, with, yeah. the, with the hat. <laughs> yeah, it's, but, uh, well, the light in here reflects off my bald head, so, um, and, it's, and it's quite <laughs> cold at the moment, so uh, yeah, hence the hat. Uh, it is. So, um, yeah, the Volkswagen bug, when did that bite? Well, and what was your first car? Um, I was on, I was about, uh, it was 1987, I missed the first bug jam by about two weeks and um, I was on a school camp and on the way to the school camp, so we went to the New Forest and I think we stopped at the fleet services and um, I went in the WH Smiths there and bought a custom car and then oh, yeah. the, um, the Keith was doing the VW XYZ um, Volkswagen supplement inside custom car and um the whole week i didn't leave the tent i was reading it cover to cover <laughs> by the time uh, the camp was over it was it was in shreds and i was kind of really wanted a volkswagen and then kind of Volksworld came out bought my first Volksworld again that ended up in shreds because it was you know half of it on my bedroom wall and and I, you know it was my it was my bible and then yeah um and then yeah when my, when i was about 13 or 14 I bought my first Volkswagen and started doing it in readiness for when I was 17 and could drive it but yeah it's another story there I'm sure we'll um, can come to that in a little bit <laughs> but yeah the Vol yeah Pete was... Schumann VW XYZ is to blame also the um a little bit later on I bought the um the Colin Burnham book uh air cooled Volkswagen okay absolute bible and it's, it's had a bit of a um everyone's into that at the moment everyone seems to be talking about that colin burnham book i think colin burnham's our god and have you seen have you seen the colin burnham book i think so i'm not a kind of a, a not a diehard air cool person yeah i probably shouldn't say that out loud but um, all of all the people that were kind of you know my age in the early uh late eight, late 80s early 90s this book came out and it was you know, it was the absolute Bible. And even now, when you look back, it's so nostalgic. Some of the cars in there are just absolutely amazing. And, um, yeah, it was inspirational for many, many people from my sort of era, the VW Echo scene. So, yeah, Colin Burnham has a lot to answer for. Good I book. have one big kind of beat but I don't know which one it was, but it had like a whole load of them in it. It might have even been that one, but... Um... Yeah, I, you... I was similar. I really wanted a Beetle as my first car. I didn't have one, but um, that's uh, yeah. Um, what was the what was the first show you attended then? Um... Uh, first show. I remember this the other day actually. It was. Um, I wonder how many other people were there. It was. A, it was. A, it was. It wasn't a show. It was a swap meet, and it was at um, Castle Donington Race Circuit. Okay. Which, um, at the time, see, I've never been that far north before, even though it's not very far north, really. <laughs> but I remember it was a really, really cold, miserable day. And, um, yeah, swap me. And I think I'd just bought my first car at that stage. I had a list of bits, and it was in, a, I was in like, a, a some sort of hangar at Castle Donington from memory. And then after that, I think it was the next year, it must have been 88, I went to Stanford Hall. And then the next day there was a show called, I think it was called Volksfest. And I think it was on 1st of May, 1988. And it was the first time I kind of saw all the sort of new wave VWs. And that was, uh, yeah. that was pretty amazing. It was, it was like a new wave event as a drag strip. It was at Avon Park. And that was, uh, that, was, that was pretty memorable, really. I remember that. Missed the first bug jam by about two weeks. Did the second one. And uh, yeah, they were real, real magical times. Really were, really were. As I'm sure lots of so was my, there, a, was there a as I'm sure lots of my friends in the scene who are in the scene and still in the scene at the time will remember. It was like, yeah, hazy days, but it was a you know really, really good times. And everything was new, everything was exciting, everything was painted in bright colours, and it just seemed really, yeah, you know, it was really, really good. Looking back, amazing times, you know. 
Yeah. Was there a particular thing which you kind of took away from those shows you then wanted to put onto your car? Or? Yeah, well, my first car, uh, the, the story behind my first car, it was a Volkswagen Beetle. And um, I was riding my BMX through a town near where I live now and lived then. And um, I was going down the road and I see a set of Beetle wings leaning up against the side of this guy's garage. And, uh, and it was an early head, early tail lights were bolted to it. It was an early colour. I said to the guy, have you, uh, you got the rest of the car that belongs to the wings? And he went, yeah, I have actually. And I said, would you sell it? And he went, yeah, I probably would. He was a pretty cool biker dude. And, um, <laughs> and I said, well, 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 really excited. Where is it? Where is it? And he kind of told me roughly where it was. And he said, come back tomorrow at 10 o'clock and we're going to have a look. So I rode off with my mate down the road and um, he told us roughly where it was. So, of course, being 13 years old and really excited, we went off on our bikes and we found this barn at the back of the post office in this particular town which is exactly where he told us it was and it was uh, inside the barn it was like a barn real barn find 1962 beetle anthracite gray all original paint and uh i had to have it and i did the deal the next day and got it for 150 pounds on the on the provider he wanted the number plate off the car so the deal was i, I mot the car once it was mot that sign the plate back to him but in hindsight i should have kept the car yeah. Gray, but this was in 1988, 13? How did that go down with your folks when you told them at 13 you just bought a car? Cool. So, kind of, yeah, work-wise, I suppose. Um, you started out on. You start out under the banner of type three detectives. Yeah. How did we, that kind um, of begin? I, I started my career at um, after college. I went to work for Carmen Connection, who were, were pretty big back in the day. Okay, yeah. Now, obviously, they've gone over to Porsches now, but in the back in the day, they ran German car company and Carmen Connection. It was the play. Yeah, it was the mecca. So I went and worked there and kind of worked my way up to shop manager there and then just kind of burnt out at it and kind of in 94 just left, wanted to go off and do a bit of traveling, no idea what I wanted to do, um, sold, sold a really nice show car I built, I had a really nice barrel green notch back, sold that to a friend. And then with the proceeds, went and basically filled up a 40 foot container full of new old stock type three parts because oh, wow. what else should you do when you've got money burning hole in your pocket? <laughs> of so, course. Um, I put a little advert in Volksworld magazine saying type two, de type three detectives, you know, we'll track down and trace all your rare type three parts. I actually stole the name from Ivan McCutcheon, who had had a little, always put a little, with his, with his blessing, of course, but stole the name of Ivan McCutcheon. He used to run a little sideline called type three detectives in the early, very early 90s. So stole the name off of Ivan, put the advert in, and the phone rang off the hook, started sending parts out every day. Um, got my car. The car I just sold, the magazine feature for that came out pretty much at the same time as the advert. So off the back of that, it, it sort of um, drummed up quite a lot of interest. Then I went off traveling for about three months, um, came back, press play on my answer phone when I got back and it was full of, I had no money. I was absolutely pockets at that stage. I spent everything traveling 
And the only the only income I could, I did have a job, had a car, but that was about it. I had this still had all these type three parts and an answer phone full of all these messages. So one by one, picked the went through the answer phone, got some money behind me, and then we basically started to go out to Europe every other weekend, buying parts, bringing them back, selling them, get enough money to go out two weeks time, come back, sell them, and it just sort of snowballed from there really. And then we decided we'd get a workshop. We'd always worked on them in our own time and in, as a, as a sidelines doing the parts, but we got our own first workshop in 96. And then from there, we said, we started working on less type threes and more camper vans. Obviously camper vans were on the up. Type threes have always sort of flatlined to a degree. And then um, in about, about a couple of years after that, we did it. We, we, we started type two detectives, the brand, and obviously started pushing the bus stuff. The suspension that work that we do and um yeah me and my business partner mark have developed it sort of ever since really and it's, it's largely a workshop business but at the same time we've got the showroom and we sell lots of parts lots of suspen suspension and sort of uh, mechanical upgrade parts generally what we, we specialize in but in the workshop we'll do anything from you know changing a full cylinder to a full mechanical overhaul or restoration we do probably only probably three or four restorations a year but we all kind of you know we like to think high-end ones for different clients we have around the world um but yes it's real good fun we, we love it absolutely love it that's good yeah it's good you're, yeah you're still kind of enjoying it how how have you kind of found the appreciation for the type threes kind of got changed in that time obviously it's gone from i guess being a bit of an also run with the beetle to being pretty popular now yeah i mean type threes yeah i mean when we when we were out there kind of um originally selling parts we were kind of servicing the the needs of the old boys that have possibly had them from new and um and then you know gradually the sort of younger kids and um you know they, they started building cool stuff um massive absolutely massive in europe i mean to be honest with you it was in the end it was kind of you know so it's a nice we still supply type three parts but it's become more of a more of a sideline stroke hobby really the type three side of things now to be honest with you which is kind of a nice way for it to be we don't have to rely on it now to put food on the table which is kind of puts the fun back into it to a degree but yeah still love a type three i've got a uh, got a nice uh original paint uh nutria brown 1500s notch back at the moment which I'm about to start work on quite soon. I've got a California imported late square. I do love a late square back there. Yeah, one of my um, one of one of the cars I really like actually a late square. Everyone goes for an early one, but I do like a late square. There's something about them really. Not so keen on late notches or late fast backs. They're okay, but I love a late square. Take a late square all day long. But yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Cool, cool. So you, yeah, you mentioned Mark a minute ago. So these days you can kind of be found selling cars at Goodwood or working with TV companies and building projects for big brands. Do you ever pinch yourself and wonder whether it's real and how it all came about? Um, there have been moments where uh, we have I've gone, this is crazy. How did we get here? How did we get here? And yeah, good, going to Goodwood for the first time was absolutely amazing. Um, that was, um, yeah, that's a real eye in a totally different world um yeah various yeah this is so to be honest with you you kind of get a bit blase about the whole thing and sometimes you come into work and you've got your blinkers on and you just come you walk to your desk and uh yeah we, we sometimes you, you do have to actually pinch yourself and say actually this is this is the you know this is a dream job really and it, it really is but yeah unfortunately you do get very blase the blinkers come out and um you forget how lucky you really are so um yeah, you, you do have to stop and remind yourself once in a while. But yeah, it's good. We've got a question in from, um, from, from James. He asked, if there's, um, is there a Volkswagen you're yet to own that you kind of thought on your bucket list? Um, yeah, I've never owned a barn door, barn door bus. Um, so yeah, I mean, everyone's got to have a barn door 23 window on their bucket list somewhere. So yeah, that, that would probably be the one. But I mean, yeah, they're so out of reach price wise. I could go and buy a house nearby and, and rent it out for 
less money than I can buy a, <laughs> a 23 window barn door. So you have to kind of, yeah, sometimes you have to be realistic. And But yeah, I, I, don't, know, I don't think I'd really want to own any, any car that valuable, really. I just get really nervous. I'd rather be running around in a shitty old laid square bag, really. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's good. It's good. What? When it comes to doing TV stuff, is it frustrating to be not seen on the screen as the guys who build the car? Um, no, not really. We did, um, one of our favourite programmes we did was For the Love of Cars um, with yeah. um, and Anstead, who we've become really friendly with. Um, he's now out in the States. He was doing uh, Wheeler Dealer. But we, we still keep in contact with, with ants. And it, I'll be honest, at the time it was a little frustrating. But after a while, you realise that's television land and that's, that's how it works. One thing we have learned is, you know, what you... It, it, totally tr uh, it totally changes your perception when you watch TV because you actually realise that yeah. most of the stuff's pre-organised, set up. Not really... What you're actually watching isn't really what's happening and... Yeah, it does open your eyes to that. We're just involved with a little thing at the moment, which will be out um, in the next couple of months. Um, only a small, small little thing we're doing. But yeah, it's always good fun. We always get loads of, um, even if we're not, you know, directly in front of the camera, people work out what, 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 what we're involved with on different things. And, you know, we, 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 we filmed stuff six years ago that we still sell vehicles from. We still get repeat business from. We still get people coming out of the woodwork from. So, yeah, we we we've turned down a few things, but it's always worth considering. And you know, we're really busy. So I, don't, I would I'd like to say that we'd like our own Type Two Detectives reality TV program, but in reality, we're so busy we probably wouldn't sustain it for too long. To be honest with you, but if there's any production companies out there, give us a call. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Never know. Yeah, we, we've done a few TV things. I've done some stuff with Ant actually. We've got involved with um, a yellow Mark One rally car with him. Oh Mark yeah, One golf rally car. That was um, another. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take, no, yeah, that was yeah. It's good, Takes a little bit of the mystique away though, doesn't it? When you get kind of have those conversations and it appears months later on the telly and all of a sudden it happens. But yeah, we so, were doing yeah. yeah, yeah, we were doing all the hard work and then. And he's coming in and taking the glory to a degree. But that's his job. He gets paid for it. We got really well paid for the love of cars thing anyway. So, you know, and someone in the guy that owned the car ended up with a nice car. The only thing about that for love of cars thing is the car that we started with was really like way, way beyond what we'd normally take on as a restoration project. But because it was linked to the owner and we had to use that car, it was a real battle. I think we did it in about six weeks from you know, absolute basket case, full pan off restoration, massive amount of work, lots of pressure. I think, um, yeah, it was, it was good fun and good memories. So we, we enjoyed it. Has there, has there been a car that you've built and had to sell through gritted teeth for whatever reason? One you wish you kept? Um, <laughs> uh, the Brasilia, the Brasilia was really cool. We did a really cool, um, we, I always wanted to get a Brasilia, um, and a Brasilia is a, an air-cooled Volkswagen that really looks like it should be water-cooled. And the first time I saw a Brasilia was when, many years ago, holiday in Portugal, and they, they, were, they were everywhere. And I kind of looked underneath it and saw it had torsion bar <laughs> suspension, air-cooled motor in the back, and thought this could be really good. And then in the end, several years later, one thing led to another. And we got offered one and I bought it unseen. It arrived. And when it got here, it had like 12,000 miles on the clock. The cleanest thing you've ever seen. And um, the plan was we were going to do like a one-day makeover on it. So we got a, we put a four-inch narrow beam on it, ball joint beam. Wound, wound everything, all the suspension down, put some wheels on it. Let it off the jack. And it was totally maxed out on the suspension. But it didn't really look low. It was weird the wheel arches were so small so we took the beam off we put all um, link pin suspension on it cut the wheel arches out and it was some, something that me and matt balls dreamt up actually in when we went out for dinner one night at slough swap meet we said let's get let's, let's get brasilia do this and then before you know where we are we were going on we were going sort of full show car spec with it 
and we collaborated with a um, really good friend of ours, Gavin at Trailer Queen. He did all the paint, we did all the mechanical stuff and the air ride. And then, yeah, one of my fondest memories was driving it into the Volkswagen show, which was just really cool. And then obviously we went on to take it to where we saw you, edition 38, I think back yeah, then. Yeah. And it, it was just, yeah, it was just, it was a whirlwind year when we had that car. We got, I think we got about eight or nine different magazine features and worldwide, Brazil, Japan, France, two in America, absolutely crazy. And, um, and I kind of sold it. And what I sold it for now was, was a lot of money at the time. And it helped out because it helped us go on and push things in a different direction with, with the business. But probably one of the cars I should have, should have kept, really, for what I got it for, for, for what I let it go for. And it, like I say, it was a big chunk of money at the time. And, but now you look back and it's just like, mm, couldn't build it for that. And it was, <laughs> uh, it was a bit iconic, really. Even if I do Where's it so, ended up? Uh, we sold it to a guy in Denmark, and then he kept it for a while. And I think it's in Germany now. It's still looking pretty good, I think. And I think all, each of the owners have developed it a bit. But funny, funny thing that's happened is loads of people have built clones. So I think oh, really? There's, yeah, there's a clone <laughs> of it in Australia, exactly the same. A friend of mine, Clint, at Conley BMX, owns that car. Um, I think there's a couple in Brazil. There's one in the States, and they are just carbon copy. It's, it's quite an honour, really. <laughs> Strange. <laughs> where, did, where did the name come from? Do you know? No. <laughs> you, generally, you don't want to know. <laughs> it's disgusting. Okay. Mr. Pasco put a message um, up saying, what was the name? But, some, um, some, if, if, you, if you know, if you know, if there's anyone out there that knows where the name came from, you need to... Um, you need to DM Andy and tell him, but it's not for, um, no, it's not for, uh, tea, it's not for tea time viewing. <laughs> you can use, um, use, your, use your imagination and you'll get there. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> um, if you had to give your younger self one piece of advice about starting the business, what would it be? Uh, oh, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. Um... Keep it fun. Don't get too big too quickly. Um, yeah, keep it Someone fun. Someone says they know. <laughs> don't, don't take yourself too seriously. Keep it fun. Don't get too big too quickly. Cash flow is king. Don't stretch yourself. And again, just, just enjoy. If you're doing something you enjoy, keep doing it. But yeah. Great advice. Yeah. Um, hypothetically, Volkswagen and Porsche no longer exist and all traces of them fall off the planet. What are you going to be driving? What are you going to see? Um, I quite like, well, I've, had, I've only ever owned, owned Volkswagen's Porsche. I've had, had quite a few BMWs. I've had some e, quite a lot of E30s, which I really like. 325 Touring's being one of my favourite. Um, I like... Um, I've had a 2002 BMW. They're really cool. Okay, yeah. they, they could, they could um, fill a little bit of a gap. Stacked headlight Mercedes, quite like those when they're nice and low. Probably a nice stacked headlight coupe. Be pretty cool. Or, I, did I say Renault 5? No. <laughs> Early Mark 1 Renault 5 Gordini would be pretty cool. I like them. Uh, or, if it was a modern car, probably be an RS4 Audi. I like those. That would um, satisfy my Porsche itch to a degree. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, there you go. All German stuff, apart from obviously the little French. Oh, what are, uh, yeah, like, quite like the um, Citroen DSs. They're, they're super cool, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, so follow, following on from the Brasilia, you went and built a air-cooled Mark III Golf. Mm. Um, do you, has, the, uh, has the crossover ship sailed now, or have you got kind of plans to do other air-cooled stuff, or water-cooled stuff on air-cooled pans in the future? I think it's sailed. I mean, lots of people have done it. Um, yeah, you can still be creative and do, do something similar. Um, we're just getting here. We're just doing our first um, 
we're doing our first electric Volkswagen at the moment, so that's quite okay. good. Fun. A little bit different. Um, we've collaborated with a an electric vehicle specialist, and that should be out pretty quick, pretty soon actually. So when it's out and and uh, and COVID times allow, we're going to invite everyone in and take people out and let people drive it and get a feel for it. Unfortunately, it's probably you know I'm not saying it's the only alternative, but it's nice to it's something that we possibly don't really want to do, but feel the need to do and at least be sort of maybe one one maybe half a step ahead of the curve so to speak but yeah it should be fun we've, we've, we've been out in quite a few of them actually over in the states and also over here and they're, they're they're quite good fun actually and it kind of get you kind of get a you kind of get a classic vehicle and it kind of makes it kind of a little bit more dare i say usable um so yeah something we're exploring and that should be quite good <laughs> do um does EV cause you any issues if you want to slam it? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. As long as the battery, <laughs> not, not, as long as you haven't got, um, as long as you haven't got batteries scraping along the floor and <laughs> you know heavy duty wiring, you know, always all out of the way. I mean, that's quite quite an important aspect of it. Like I say, we're we're kind of, kind of collaborating with someone who's done many many of these in the past, so we're kind of you know we're doing some of the work, they're doing some of the work, and. Yeah, I mean, the first few is going to be a little bit of a, um, you know, relying on them and somewhat of a learning curve, but it should, it should be good. And I'm sure I mean, the first one we're doing is, is based on a 67 cal bug, so it will look like okay. a, quite, quite a low little 67 bug. Really, we had a 2.2, 179 horsepower motor in it before, and it really handled the power well. So it really felt good going over, you know, going flat out in this bug as it was so we thought well hopefully um it should handle the um it should handle the just gonna put my phone on charge quickly it should handle the the electric power pretty nicely yeah yeah so um oh. we've lost you or oh, i have I'm back, sorry, didn't oh. happen there. That's all right. No worries. Um just while we were right. talking about things on air cooled pans, what happened to, what happened to the K seventy estate? Um it kind of um, we did all the we did all the we, we got the K seventy, we made it into an estate, did the metal work, um oh. and it, it, that's about as far as it got. We then got really busy. Oh, battery power. Oh, I lost you again. Yeah, sorry, I'm back now. Hopefully, it'll be okay. Stay uh, so, yeah, need a bit more tension on the, yeah, on the string. K70, we did the metal work and stuff on it. Um, and then we got really busy, and then it was kind of it was unfair to work on our own stuff when we had paying customers queuing out the door to for us to do their vehicles so it kind of went to one side and it kind of we got into different things got into obviously building up the showroom side of the business and in the end we let it go to someone that promised us that they would um finish it off but we yet to see it yet to see it complete so hopefully one day it'll be there but who knows who knows yeah indeed knows? um but yeah i wish, wish I, still... I, part, part of me wishes we'd done it but other part of me which is kind of you know we would have we probably would have spent 40 or 50 grand doing it and it probably would have been worth about 10 so you have to look at yeah, these yeah. things with a with a with a, with a uh, you know sorry sometimes your head and not your heart you know absolutely um let's talk about giving something back uh, you're looking at the just looking on the messages here that come up uh, ben pasco yeah, ben pasco is going to tell you what the curb snake means yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
So, yeah, your bus boot camps are an opportunity for owners to learn from you and your team. What mm. inspired you to start them? And I guess one could argue it's counterintuitive teaching customers how to do the job themselves. Well, that was kind of what everyone told us when we did it, but um, we were brave enough to do it. Um, it was uh, the, the brainchild of myself and Mark, um, and we decided we, we would try it. And um, we didn't know if it would work, but sometimes you just got to try these things. And, I, you know, the, the first one we did we, in the morning when people were rolling up, we were really ultra nervous. And it went, the first one, I mean, they all go so well, but at the end of the day, we were absolutely buzzing. Really, really great to give something back and kind of tell people, uh, tell people, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly. And yeah, they're really fun events. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't been doing for a little while, but we're going to start um, rolling them out again in as as times allow. Probably May, probably late May. Okay. We should feel comfortable enough to run them in limited numbers. We've got a huge, uh, huge waiting list for them, which is really, really good. So I think kind of yeah, like I say, May, late May. The dates will be going live quite soon. But obviously, as Boris Boris would say, we're watching the data, and uh, yeah, watch this space. So for, for people who aren't kind of aware, can you give us like a, yeah, a two, two minute summary of the sort of yeah. stuff you go through? People rock up uh, here in the morning. Um, we feed them breakfast. After breakfast, we uh, basically give them a little bit of a shop tour, show them what we do, why we do it and how we do things. And then we, it's basically a maintenance training day. It's not a boot camp. We're not going to get the weights out and get you on an <laughs> exercise bike or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, maintenance training day. So you turn up. You don't have to bring your own Volkswagen. We've got plenty here, and we teach you sort of how to service your own Volkswagen, but service it properly. Um, there's obviously lots of information online, but you will never know the source of the, you know, how reliable the source is. So you come and learn from the experts. We teach you to service your air-cooled engine. Uh, we teach you how to track and trace electrical problems, which is part of the course that I do myself. Really enjoyable. Wiring's a bit of a um, looked at as a bit of a dark art but actually when you get to the when you're actually told how to do it from the, the, the you know the ground up wiring is actually a, a very simple thing to actually you know track and trace a problem so by the end of the session everyone is willing their Volkswagens to break down so they can fix them and service them uh, we do the five five main reasons why you might break down how to get going again which kind of everyone needs to know because how frustrating is it to get three quarters of the way to Cornwall will need to end up on the back of an AA truck, AA truck and back home again. So yeah, yeah. teach people, you know, the, the main reasons why you might break down how to get home again, a little bit of hands-on stuff. We feed them a really nice, we have, we hire a chef and we have a really nice lunch with everyone. And uh, yes, yeah, a really good way of, you know, us getting to know our customers, us customers, our customers getting to know us. Obviously, lots of them, lots of the people that come on the boot camps go off and try stuff on their own. Often what happens is, you know, they say, let's leave it to the experts and we get some great new customers from it. But yeah, really, really enjoyable. I know um, a few of your, your heritage crew have been on them and yeah, yeah, yeah. really good fun. You've been on one, haven't you? Not yet, no. I've kind I've of missed like... them for whatever reason. But yeah, I'll come up. Yeah, you were busy that day, weren't you? <laughs> Yeah, doing my hair. Yeah, <laughs> lucky you. <laughs> um, lucky you. We got a message earlier about uh, Porsche nine one fours. I think you're building a nine one four as well. Is that right? Yeah, was that from Matt, Matt Pickering? Hello, That's Matt. right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Matt's doing a Matt. I've been watching Matt's Instagram. Matt Pickering. He's doing a uh, not not Johnny Pick Ronnie Pickering, totally different person. But uh, <laughs> Matt Matt Pickering is doing a he's got like a graffiti nine one four, which is really cool. And I'm doing a sort of like a GT style nine one four, which I've been doing as a little bit of a project at home. It's nearly done. Just got to build the motor. Uh, it's having a two point one two point one four cylinder motor in it. Finished that. And then once that's done, I've got a, uh, that's probably three or four weeks off being completed. And then I've been, I've got a really cool ratty patinaed one, which I'm going to do after I've done the nice one. But yeah, 914 is like when I started type threes, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. Everyone said they're impossible to work on. 
got a 914 20 years later, 25 years later, everyone says, oh, they're a nightmare. And, but, you know, again, it's a learning curve. You work things out. And now I could probably do one blindfolded. So I quite like them. I really like a 914. I've got a 924. I like, I like a 924 as well. I've got an early 924 that I actually got given. I've done quite a few 924s. They're, they're quite... Yes, they're a poor man's Porsche, but they're they're, they're really un as you as you know, being a nine four four owner, they're really a really underrated car. So I've got that lot waiting to do, and yeah, loads of loads of other stuff waiting to do. But I kind of do it one car at a time and get it done, and then crack on with the next one really. But yeah, I love I love. I mean, I don't really do much hands on stuff here too much anymore because I have to lead the troop, so to speak. But I do like keeping my hand in and doing my own little projects at home and stuff. It's it's kind of good good hobby to have really. Yeah, absolutely. Um you tend to have a pretty good barometer for style, so kind of leading the way with lowness and so then jacking type twos up before everyone was kind of doing that. What's the, the next thing we're all going to be doing in the next few years? Um well earlier I mentioned the Colin Vernon book. Yeah. You need everyone who's watching this needs to go and Google Air called Volkswagens. There's some pictures in that book that inspired a, a generation of air called owners. But kind of the, the late the stuff that was going on in the early 80s is, is, is at the moment I can sense quite a revival. Um, I mean, a few people have been plucking away at it for the last 10 years. But in recent times, you know, we've seen a huge surge of people wanting to kind of get back to the cars they remember in that Colin Burnham book. Um, so, yeah, I think that's. You know, just real. I think we're going to see a few people actually do a proper job of building some late 80s Calvert cars, maybe, dare I say. Um, yeah, we might have a little project of our own up our sleeve that I think we've spoken to you about. Um, but we'll, we won't say too much about that. But yeah, that maybe that. Obviously, the electric vehicle that we're doing. Who knows who yeah. might follow us down that route. Um, obviously, full-on restored, rest, restored cars. People are still really into the, the split screen vans, you know, not just the air cooled community, but when we go to Goodwood, we meet, you know, we meet people that have got huge car collections of every mark and um, high end mark. And they've all, they all love the, you know, they all mm, magnetate to our stand and everyone loves a split screen. They're, they're iconic. And, you know, we, 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 we still see a huge demand for really nice, all original split screen vans. Um, there's nothing else like it, really. Nothing else like it. So, yeah. Yeah. A bit of all of that, really. Some, some of those. Yeah. Well, we've got a chat. someone watching from Mexico City, which is pretty cool. So, uh, yeah. How's it going, Mexico? Um, so, yeah, my last question. Last question is, if you could drive any car on any road with anyone, uh, what, where and who would it be with? Oh, good question. Uh... It would be driving into the first ever bug jam, which I missed. Okay. And it would be in a in the barn door bus that I've never owned. <laughs> ratty, rat, ratty as hell. Slammed on his ass with a big motor that would run twelve second quarter miles which would be unheard of in 1987. <laughs> and it would have lots of rows of seats. And the seat, it wouldn't be, can I have a few people? Yeah, why not? It would be all of the people that we've, you know, loved and lost over the years. So Kinky Mick would definitely be in there and all the people that I've lost close to my heart. And we'd all go there and we'd have a mega time and I could give them some words of wisdom that could hopefully keep them on this planet a little bit longer than they... Managed first time. But yeah, awesome. going, to, going to Bug Jam 87 in a, in a ratty barn door bus, running 12 second quarter miles, and also looking around, it'd be great to look around and see all of the cars from back then and the people, and I'd spy on some of my mates that reckon they were there that probably weren't even there anyway. <laughs> and, uh, I'd, I'd hunt them down and call a few people out. But yeah, Steve Walker was there, so I'd go and take the mickey out of him for half an hour. And uh, yeah, no, that that would be um, that would be a great great little thing to do. Super. You said 
you, you said earlier you missed it by two weeks. What, what were you up to? Well, I, I, I didn't know anything about Volkswagens until I bought this VW oh, for two weeks after VW XYZ book. So it was, um, I think, in there. It was, um, and I went to Bug Jam in '88, and it was all the cars that we'd seen in the first Volkswagen and everything. And it was just like, it was like meeting your hero. It was amazing, amazing. It was really good, really cool. So yeah, yeah, Bug Jam, Bug Jam '87 in in that barn door, and then yeah, just go and lay down a few twelve second quarter miles and. <laughs> Beating the um, beating all the really fast drag bugs and stuff of the day be fun, be really good fun. Not that, not that, not that I'd have the balls to uh, do a twelve second quarter mile in the bus. I'd probably have to get this Lambo to pilot it or something like that. But there you go. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Well, um, that's kind of yeah, that's rounded up my questions really. So yeah, good. massive thank you for uh, joining me, today, Paul. I've yes. really enjoyed our chat and um, good, good fun. We'll come and, we'll yeah, come and see you when times allow. And yeah, definitely. You. I think it's um, everyone's long overdue a catch up, aren't they? Uh, yeah, get yourself on a boot camp. I will. Uh, I'll book myself in. Good. Okay. Well, so, thanks very much for uh, the invite onto the uh, little show. And um, yeah, yeah not a problem. Thank you very much. But for people wanting to kind of check out your stuff, you're on at T Two D Paul and also at type two detectives on instagram and then i guess the servicing cars for sale etc boot camps type two detectives.com is probably the best place yeah, to go detectives.com or yeah just search us on the on the social media platforms and yeah thank you very much fantastic if anyone's out there just like paul and wants to have a natter with us then yeah drop us a dm and we can have a chat about getting you on thank you to everyone for watching great to uh, yeah see people from all over the world joining us um we're going to be saving this chat to our stories, our IGTV. We'll also get it onto Facebook and YouTube as well, so people can catch up and stuff they've missed. Uh, please like it, please share it, drop us a comment, tag your friends. We'll see you all again soon. Take care, stay safe. Take it easy, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Bye. -bye.